Good afternoon, everyone. Following on the heels of yesterday's video, pointing out that ice is not even melting far into April now because I only used the last couple of years showing where it's flat, but told NSIDC doesn't even count ice loss in April. Here you go, the previous charts. Do your own research on the interactive. New paper confirming the pause continues. As well as temperature data tweaking, no way that never happens in a political agenda. New temperature data sets out. NOAA. Uh, the planet is cooled behind record year 2016 by 0.18. Wait a minute, maybe my math's wrong, but 0.73 minus 0.19 is not 0.18, NOAA. Also, ahead of, meaning plus, 2015 by 0.15, C. Wait a second, I dug up the 2015 temperature data, and maybe my math is really bad, but 19 minus 18 is 1. You're putting in 0.15, are you kidding me? That's 15 times higher. And thank you so much for the comments and the feedback that you've given me about the talk that I did with Lee Wheelbarger. If you have a moment, jump over to Mini Ice Age Conversations on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud and really see how this grand solar minimum is going to unfold with the electrical phenomenon we can expect. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. And to clarify from yesterday's video about Greenland ice loss and the very different numbers that DMI has compared to NASA. The Greenland melt extent for 2017 hasn't even started yet. That's how anomalous it is. I was written several emails and comments on my board saying, hey, NSIDC doesn't even count ice loss or melt until May. Well, you know what? That's totally incorrect. You should do your own research here on the interactive charts before you start writing these types of things. Of course they count ice loss through April. This is how anomalous it is. And a new paper out. The hiatus in global warming has been caused by what? Variability in the atmosphere. Energy imbalance. Oh, that means no CO2 warming. The pause continues. This is an amazing article. I'll let you dig into it yourself. It's so in-depth. It'd be very difficult to explain it in this few moments here, but let me give it a try. Our upper atmosphere is the control knob of the temperature on the planet, regulated by the sun, the magnetosphere, and natural variability. Wide out here for you. The trend continues. We are cooling. And I do like what's up with that. At the very bottom of the articles, they have several other articles that are related to the topic. And then this one caught my eye while I was at the uh, comment section there. Temperature data tweaking. That never happens in a political agenda. Would it really? Do you think so? Let me put these top and top so you can really see. Before and after. The former data set is on the bottom. The adjusted set is at the top. That's nearly double. It went from 0.46 to 0.93. Here they are side by side if you look at it information differently. Thank you, Bob Chisdale, for putting this together. Great job that you're doing. Staying on the theme of temperatures, NOAA releasing a new land and ocean temperature departure from March 2017. That temperature anomaly across North America looks pretty similar to what happened to the modern minimum. So let's compare temperatures. I want to take you over to Dr. Roy Spencer's site here. University of Huntsville, Alabama satellite. March temperatures 0.19 C. We are cooling indeed. But jump over to the NOAA report. I've highlighted in blue here. Behind the record 2016 March... By 0.18, okay, that's fine. So let's just do the math here. I dug up the data. Dr. Roy Spencer puts this all through his site. You just have to go in there and dig it out yourself. Right here, March 2016, top blue box, 0.73. This year, 2017 March, bottom. Do the math yourself. That is definitely not 0.18. What are they? This is cooled more than double what NOAA has put out. 
And I know you're going to come back and say, oh, it's a land plus a surface temperature. So these satellite temperatures don't matter. The last 25 years, all we've heard is it's satellite record proves it. It's the satellite era. The satellites prove that global warming. Well, now you can't have your cake and eat it too. Now you're going to try to discredit satellite information that's saying land based and surface is even more correct than the satellites, which were the satellites proving that global warming was real all these years. No, the lies stop now. Continuing ahead of 2015 by 0.15, same month of March. So I just dug in March 2015. 0.18 global temperature great uh, let's just subtract that wait 2017 bottom left 0.19 so wait a second they just said it was ahead by 0.15 so for me 19 minus 18 equals 1 one hundredth of a degree and they are trying to report that it was ahead by 0 0.15 that's 15 times difference so let me give it to you in a different way here. This is straight off the uh, NOAA Environmental Center again. Climate report. So they actually put the global temperatures and divided them into land and ocean. But then they still have the total at the bottom if you combine the two. So it's a land minus the ocean and then you get this total. 1.05? Are you kidding me? The only possible way they could have gotten that is starting way back in the 1850s from when it was below baseline and tried to add it up. That's unbelievable. Really? Let's go back to the numbers again. Satellite temperature data set, University of Huntsville, Alabama. I'll bring it to the Northern Hemisphere. We'll divide it out again. I have all the info here. I'll just let you look at it. Northern Hemisphere. Okay, land, ocean. Now, the land temperatures are in dispute anyway because these temperature stations have been moved into the cities next to airport landing runways. There's so much controversy about the land based temperatures anyway about where the stations are placed. I linked below to Stephen Goddard's site where he has a rundown, so much information on the exact topic I'm talking about. I encourage you to go there and look. They're even claiming that 100% of the warming over the last 10 years has been to temperature station movements into warmer heat islands. Anyway, they're putting land and ocean on the northern hemisphere at 1.3 C. Now, wait a second. You just saw that entire North America was cooler than average. How is that possible that the entire northern hemisphere warms, yet a substantial part of it's below normal temperatures? So if we're taking a look at this data set here, we got the global and then there's the northern hemisphere and we'll bring it down. It's right next to that blue box at the very bottom, 0.3. So that's literally a whole one degree C warmer temperatures. Then we'll come over here to the southern hemisphere. Again, they're broken it apart. Land, ocean, come up with a 0.79. But this column here in the southern hemisphere, very bottom just before the tropics, 7 one hundredths of a degree. That's running seven tenths of a degree warmer. So where is this political agenda coming from? The planet's cooling, yet we keep getting fed these numbers that are absurdly warmer than what you're seeing with your eyes. 2017 is not going to be the warmest year ever. Europe's going to be below normal temperatures here for April. More cold fronts are sweeping down from Canada all across the United States right now. I've linked everything below in the comment box, and I hope all of you do your own research and just try to verify what I'm talking about, ask questions, write to some of these people, ask them to explain it. And if you'd like the kind of information I'm giving to you here on this channel, please support me on Patreon. And I do thank you for your valuable time. I know time is so precious these days. Thank you so much for listening to what I had to say. I do hope you got something out of the video to help you make more informed, wise decisions going forward. Our planet is absolutely going into an intense mini ice age. You do need to prepare. I just don't get it why the governments of our world are not telling us what's about to happen. I'm trying to bring in this information as an informed citizen who cares about our species, who cares about other people. And I promise I will keep these videos just like this coming to you so you can get you and your families ready.